Okay. Uh, again, one more time. Assalamu uh, alaikum, everybody, and uh, uh, welcome to this uh, lecture uh, in this class, the thinking class, which we call it the introduction to thinking. And this is a series, one a class of a series of three classes. Uh, so far, let me just uh, go over what we have discussed so far. Uh, let me go with my slides. We started uh, talking about the Islamic perspective of thinking. Uh, let's see what we we gave an introduction uh, about all this issue about thinking, why thinking, what's the product of thinking, why people uh, quite often have failed to uh, provide a very precise definition of what thinking is. Uh, and then we talked about the models of knowledge where we uh, showed that the uh, uh, most popular model of knowledge is that you have knowledge produced by a certain method of thinking and the method of thinking is produced by the mind. And we discussed that at length. Uh, we talked about uh, controversies uh, about evolution, absolute creation as being the, uh, uh, how the different forms of thinking happen, especially with the uh, using logic and science, etc. cetera. Uh, then we talked about what the mind is and what's, what's mind, what's not mind. Uh, we looked at the Muslim scholars, how they looked at the mind definitions in the previous centuries, how they viewed it, and they had their own thoughts about it. Uh, we also talked about uh, the uh, non-Muslim, the most popular uh, definitions of mind and talks about of mind by the two philosophers. One is Hegel, who is the father of idealism, who thought that the brain is uh, can produce thinking on its own uh, by uh, just viewing the matter. Whereas Marx talked about the matter or the object being uh, will be reflected on the brain, and the brain figures out the nature of the matter simply because the matter has its own intrinsic property to reveal its reality to the brain. It's very interesting thought. And then we talked at length about Hegel and Hegel fallacy. We talk about Marx. Uh, then we talked about the reality of mind, what mind is, uh, and we brought into uh, the discussion the uh, definition, definition provided by uh, Sheikh Taqi Din uh, and Nabhani, uh, in his, and he introduced his uh, vision and view of thinking in his book called The Thinking, as well as another book called The Islamic Personality, and yet a third book which I did not mention here, I will bring it up later, which is called the quick thinking or intuitive quick thinking. Then um, we uh, started talking about the components of mind uh, being four components, brain, senses, reality, previous information. And this is also brother Samir. He emphasized this very much um, uh, in more details. He gave more examples of the thinking, what happens if you uh, if you are not able to sense an object, what happens if there is no object at all, no reality? What happens if you don't have information to explain the reality? I think he talked about that at length. I'm not repeating that. So this is what the brother Samer did on uh, the components of mind. And also he did lecture four on the, some, he gave some examples. Anyway, so that's what has what uh, happened in the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, today, uh, I will talk about uh, a subtopic of the issue, which is called the levels of thinking. Uh, and let me introduce a new slide here and write levels of thinking. And before I go into detail, let me just put the three main levels uh, uh, of thinking or uh, the in the hierarchy of thinking, we can distinguish three uh, levels. 
and we will go into each one of them. The first one is the most, the simplest, I'll call it simple, superficial, uh, without any exhaustion uh, thinking. And uh, going up in the hierarchy, you can go a bit deep or deeper than the superficial. So we just say deep thinking. Okay, so there is, uh, and then uh, one more level, we call it the enlightened. Now, I just want to warn that the word enlightened here is not derived from the era of enlightenment, uh, which is the era of resonance, uh, renaissance and renaissance of Europe. Uh, they used to call that era after the uh, uh, philosophers started attacking the, um, the church and its domination over the people. Uh, the, and then of course came the, uh, as uh, I spoke earlier, uh, many philosophers like Descartes, like Hegel of the time, uh, like Copernicus, like Erasmus, there, there are many philosophers in the, uh, who came uh, into the 14th and 15th century. And that era which, uh, uh, which, came, which came immediately after these philosophers, they call it the enlightenment or the enlightened era. Uh, that's not, here I am using the word enlightened thinking in the linguistic term not the uh, terminology term. So based on language which use the word light and enlightened, and there is uh, shedding, like shedding light on the idea. And I will, once we explain that, it will become uh, obvious. I just want to make sure that we don't uh, confuse uh, sometimes uh, terms or terminologies which are well known in the history. So someone starts going on the enlightened, on, on, to the enlightenment era in the history and find definitions of thinking to, to think that this is what is. No, this is not, it's not the, let me in fact write here, is not related to the uh, enlightened era of Europe, okay? So I just want to make sure that we don't uh, confuse concepts. <clears throat> okay. So let's dig in uh, and I will <clears throat> introduce my new slide, which is the simple, called simplistic slash super official thinking. Uh, okay. Now let's remember that whether the thinking is simple or deep or enlightened, in order for it to be, it must, must contain the four components thought or thought process, let me call it. I will be using this interchangeably, thought process or thinking process. So it must contain those. So you cannot, if the, uh, uh, let's say the material object, if it's absent, there is no object to think about, it's not thinking, it's imagination. So you imagine, let's say those who talk about ghosts or today, uh, although I would hesitate a lot to use the example, uh, talking about Martians, people from Mars, who really until today, there is no reality for the people, the Martian people, the people of Mars. But let me keep this aside. I want to avoid arguments here uh, for people who would claim that uh, these are real, they are uh, real objects, but we don't know about them. So it's, so if the material object 
uh, when I say material, it has to be it has to be composed of matter, uh, and the matter is a substance of the universe of our universe, our material universe. So if the material object is absent, then that's not thinking. It's not neither superficial nor deep nor enlightened. So it must be uh, there must be an object. And uh, the object must be sensible, which means using the five senses uh, of the human. So it must be sensible using the five senses of the human. Because if there is an object, assume there is a material object, uh, let's say, uh, assume there is an object that we have just discovered. We have just discovered the existence of a certain object. Let's say uh, an island that has not been explored before. Just today we have uh, found this uh, island. Uh, and someone probably has uh, talked about an island of the same category and the same characteristics of the uh, <clears throat> island today that we have just discovered. That is not a thought. That's not thinking because that object was, although it does exist, but it could not have been sensed before it was discovered. So it, it must be sensed. Uh, somehow, and when I say the, the uh, uh, sensed with the five senses of the human, this, I'm pretty sure Brother Samir mentioned that the sensing does not have to be direct. Like today, uh, I can make some thinking about ele electromagnetic waves in my room. Now, in the room I, I, I am, I'm sitting right here, I'm pretty sure there is some electromagnetic wave uh, uh, around me. I, I cannot see it because it's, it's beyond the scope of my vision. I cannot hear it with my regular ears because the frequency that it's coming in, it's beyond the scope of the frequencies which are receivable uh, by the uh, natural human ear, it's not touchable because the substance of this <clears throat> object is very thin, very tiny, and you will not be able to sense it. But nevertheless, it's sensible. Why is it sensible? Because it can be detected, can be detected with instruments so, such as uh, a receiver of the phone. This is a receiver, it has a receiver, and this phone can if I turn it on and I start re uh, receiving a signal, then this phone can convert that signal from analog into digital and from digital into something which can be analyzed, can be then sensed with the uh, human senses. So this we have to be again careful when we talk about the five senses, someone would come and say, hey, how could you then uh, make any uh, thinking process on electromagnetic waves? which cannot be seen, cannot be heard, cannot, cannot, etc. cannot be touched, cannot be smelled, uh, cannot be tasted. So, and but it does exist and we can uh, make some thinking about it. Oh, so I had to be careful. Five senses of the human, whether direct, and let me put this in parentheses, direct or indirect. So it could be direct or indirect. Okay. So the superficial thought must have uh, uh, the object, the object must be sensed and must have some information on the object under discussion. Now, here when I say information on the object under scrutiny, under uh, the thought process, because I may have tons of information billions or trillions of bytes of information, if you allow me to use my computer terminology, but all of the information I have, none of it is related to a matter that we are discussing. Okay, let's say we are discussing some issues about the uh, variations, let's say of uh, honey uh, coming from uh, high mountainous areas. I may, not, I may not have information about that. So I cannot use all the information I have, although I have read probably thousands of books, but none of them was related to this material. So 
the thinking process will not proceed until and unless I have an information related to the object uh, under consideration. Lastly, of course, I have a brain with the ability to correlate information with the, I call it with the object, with the material object. It, it, and that, again, I think I mentioned this, we have to be careful. The brain has different characteristics and different abilities. One of them is to memorize, one of them is to retrieve information, and uh, uh, one of them is to be able to connect, to connect information to realities and information to uh, information. The ability to correlate and connect uh, uh, information with uh, previous, with other information, uh, and to connect uh, information to certain objects. So let's say if I uh, see you uh, and I have an information that you are the brother of uh, a close friend and the brother of brother Muhammad Shirazi, and uh, he has talked about you and he mentioned your name to me, but I have never seen you today. I see you here and I see the name, I recognize that. Then I immediately make the connections. Ah, this is the brother that Shirazi talked to me about. That's, that's the, what we mean by connection. However, so it must have these components. But then comes here the, uh, the way the thinking does. Uh, for the superficial thinking, we'll use the first available information related to the object in order to pass judgment. Or pass judgment, I'm using the uh, some of these uh, uh, terms that Brother Samir used. Uh, in his previous lectures, where he said, why am I thinking? I'm thinking to pass a judgment. Or in our uh, uh, methodology here, or uh, in order to uh, produce a new thought, slash idea. Now, expanding my uh, the scope of my talks, we can use the word thought and idea interchangeably because that's, uh, they mean the same thing. So it, the superficial thinking, it's a thinking, as I said, it's a valid method of thinking. It does have all the four components. It's not imagination. It is not uh, simply uh, 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 talking about objects without being sensed. It's just like uh, imagination or talking about objects without information just by feeling I'm touching something and based on my senses and uh, instincts, I figure out something. No, it's not like that. It's, it's a thought. So for example, uh, and here I'm saying, because my brain has lots of information, uh, and then uh, with this information, the first information that come, uh, that my brain comes up with related to this object, I use it. There could be yet another piece of information for example, uh, you uh, introduce me to some uh, some brother, and then you will uh, say, "Oh, this brother has uh, studied medicine at uh, Cleveland College." The first thing information I have comes to my to my mind. Uh, this is a, a person who studied medicine at Cleveland. Cleveland, I know I have information. It's one of the top schools. And then I made the conclusion, this brother must be sharp, must be sharp, must be a good doctor. So I will go and take my children or myself or my wife uh, uh, for this doctor. I use the first piece of information, but uh, if I dig deep, when that's when we go deeper, I find that uh, while in that school, uh, the brother, uh, there, there were lots of conflicts, lots of issues involved. He was not able to attain the proper uh, knowledge. He was discriminated against. There were all types of things that could have happened, or he probably had uh, used 
different means to get grades and pass and graduate. Uh, maybe the information is there. I simply did not explore any further. First, information that comes to my head, I use it. Uh, uh, you present me with uh, an object like this, a glass. Now, immediately, I see the glass. The glass has uh, transparent liquid in it, which is uh, water. Uh, and then you will tell me there is this is uh, a clean uh, water uh, uh, brought, let's say, from one of the uh, best mineral uh, woods. Okay, and so that's a water which I recognize by the sense, and I use your information where the water has been uh, brought from, and I know. Uh, one information that that place is a good source of uh, clean and pure water. Uh, and then I take this object uh, with, the, with the water and I value it and I can pay some good money for it. However, however, there is yet another information which is attainable, which is attainable uh, that that particular place which I was just told about, which is the source of water. Uh, some explorations were done, and they found some type of uh, toxic pollution, very tiny microscopic or nanoscopic type, uh, which can uh, have a diverse effect or a negative effect on the body. So the information is there. I could find it out and I could pass yet a better judgment on this water. So, but I take the first available information, one piece, two pieces, three pieces. Number one, without uh, exploring the reality of this information, uh, without uh, attempting to get more information on the object, without being exhaustive. Uh, and if I may take this example, apply it to some of uh, some of the Islamic thoughts. Let's say you are asking someone about uh, a hukum, about a rule in, in Islam, and you find the person, he knows a hadith related to, 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 uh, to the issue, uh, a hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or even an, an ayah. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> the, uh, once you ask the question, he uses that hadith or that ayah, to derive uh, the rule or to give you what's the, the, the judgment. But yet there are other hadiths that if they put together with the first one, you will find that the rule is a bit different or not the same exactly as it was said. And here is uh, uh, an example I want to, uh, to bring. In one of the journeys or maybe the, uh, the uh, small uh, words that some of the Muslims at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam took. Uh, there was this event, this incident, where one of the fighters, one of the soldiers, uh, he needed to take what we call in Islam uh, a ghusl. He, th there is a reason that demanded uh, that he should take a bath, take a bath in order to uh, cleanse himself and to be ready for prayer. It happened to be the uh, time uh, of the year was cold and the water was so cold and the person was wounded. The person wa had a wound because it's a war. So he asked question to the brothers, is it okay if I bypass the ghusl with water? I will just use the, what we call it in Islam, tayammum. Tayammum means use uh, the uh, the uh, clean type of dust. Use the dust to perform your ghusl or wudu, so you don't. Uh, and the the uh, ones who were around him, they gave him the immediate judgment. No, you cannot do that because that incident tayammum only if the water is absent. And they did not take into consideration the wound and the potential threat to the person. So they gave him the, the, the answer is that no, you should actually use the water to take the bath. He used the water to take the bath. The wound got infected more and more and the person died. 
the person died. When they came back to the Prophet وسلم, the Prophet told them, you actually have killed your brother. You should not have given him that judgment. There are other issues to consider. So that's a difference between what a superficial, simplistic thought. The thought they brought was a valid thinking process because they applied something that is that they know. They applied that information. The first piece of information that comes to mind, you apply it, and that's it. That's called symptom. Uh, and this is very, yeah, go ahead. So uh, when we talk about the four uh, steps of this uh, process of thinking, uh, at what step does the actual thinking uh, start? Well, that is, you know, uh, the production of the thought itself, uh, at which step does it start? Does it start after the matter is sensed or and the thought is completed with the previous information or does the actual thinking start once you have the previous information? Hmm. Can be both. Can be by uh, sensing an object, uh, let's say you just saw uh, a very strange piece of uh, type of animal. You are walking in the forest with your family, you are making some trips, and you just saw something for the first time. Uh, uh, an animal that's it's not a bear, it's not a wolf, it's not uh, a hyena, but it's something in that category. But this is the first time you ever see it in practice, in reality, or, or on, from TV. Uh, so that can provoke the object itself. Sensing it can provoke your thought process. Because the, as, as Brother Samir was saying, thinking is a process. So that object can provoke the uh, thinking process. Or, or you have some information, previous information you read somewhere, uh, somehow in magazines or you saw in on some uh, National Geographic things that in a certain forest uh, there is uh, certain, let's say, uh, trees with certain structure, with certain value, blah, 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 or there are certain animals or insects or birds that come in. And then with uh, uh, browsing through your thought, browsing through your thoughts uh, with the information that you already have. Once you see an object, because the, the object is there or you hear its sound, then you use that information that you already uh, had in your brain to pass a judgment, oh, this must be it. Like someone is telling you again, uh, if you are going to, uh, let's say to a, a train station, you will, uh, there will be a brother who will be meeting you there in order to guide you somewhere. And once you uh, come out from the train, your brain now is trying to get, oh, there is a, a person who is waiting for you. So you see a person, he, to you, he looks uh, like a Muslim and he looks, uh, he's waiting for someone. Then you pass a judgment, oh, that must be the person waiting for me. So the uh, thought here is provoked by an information that you already have. So it's either way. It can be this and it can be that. So it can be sensing an object that provokes your thought process and you, you look for the piece of information and you pass a judgment or an information that's in your brain that uh, uh, pushes you to look for an object that is applicable to this piece of information. So in this case, the, the, the thought process is uh, provoked and initiated by the, uh, by the brain itself. But then you need all the components, whether it's this way or that way, or that way, you need all the uh, components to be there. Okay. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Exactly. Okay, good, good, thanks. Uh, so now I, I just want to make sure that if I want to define the uh, sim simplistic or superficial thinking, is the type of thinking which applies to an object using uh, the first or slash immediately available piece of information 
which allows the person to pass the judgment. So it allows you to pass a judgment. Okay, so this is how it is. Now, as we can immediately tell, like the example I gave about the uh, Sahaba producing a thought or a, a judgment, which they did not explore all possibilities and all variants, like what happens during the wound, what are the excuses, what are the ruhsa, the uh, uh, things which are not allowed, what is about the harm if it gets, uh, uh, if someone gets harmed because of executing a certain rule, uh, do, do I have an exception or not? So uh, when I don't look at all of these, what are the cases and events where it's allowed to take an exception uh, from the general rule? Uh, then I, I will pass a, a quick judgment. I could, now the superficial thinking is not necessarily wrong, does not necessarily produce wrong results. Uh, but the, so I will say superficial thinking from here, not necessarily incorrect could be correct, but then you are lucky because your brain used the, the first available information and the most relevant and the, probably the only one piece of information available. So even if you do deep thinking or deeper thinking or even lightened, you will come to the same conclusion. So it will be uh, uh, no different, but it's a chance, it's a chance. Uh, now, this is one thing. The other issue is that superficial thinking is convenient for the comfort of the process. So the process now is comfortable. So instead of uh, digging deep, somebody asks you a question and immediately you, you give the answer, and you are happy that you answered the question and you gave the person a relief, uh, it's convenient. Uh, and, and this convenience can lead to even some form of laziness. You become lazy. Uh, uh, given that, given that thinking is a very tedious, energy consuming process, it is well known, uh, and this is uh, scientific. Uh, type of thinking and, and details that the thinking, especially uh, when you apply the four types of thinkings, you look at the information, you try to sort out which information is related to what and so on. It's very uh, energy consuming. In fact, as I was trying to say, this process is by and large uh, consume more energy than very hard physical labor. And someone can go and fetch this piece of information and find the uh, studies about it and the details, evidences. So uh, you don't be, uh, you don't superficially or simplistically take what I say. In fact, uh, in my classrooms, in my regular classrooms in uh, technology, quite often I bring a piece of information or piece of judgment or idea to the students, and then I challenge them. I say, find whether what I am saying is valid or invalid. Don't take my word for granted. I tell you, I took this piece of information from the following reference. But trust me, there are tens of other references that may say otherwise. So the convenience of thought and the convenience of comfort and the trend of becoming lazy sometimes pushes you say, you know what, forget it. I will just take it this way. So that's easy. So it's convenient and it's not time consuming. And it is also dangerous, dangerous if you get used to it and you use it 
almost in all occasions. This is very dangerous because sometimes, sometimes with superficial thinking, the best friend that you get uh, friendly with might be the one that you should not be even, uh, you, get, you got close to, or the other way around. With, if you are very simplistic in your thought and you use superficial thinking a lot, so use the first piece of information available on someone and you will start trusting that person and passing information to him and you, uh, you, end up, you end up revealing vital information to someone who should not be getting them. And that's, if you, if you come to think about it, how do uh, intelligent operations uh, collect information? Intelligent people, not intelligent people, people who, of intelligent intelligence organizations, because the, those who work in intelligence organizations does not, does not necessarily need to be intelligent. So I have to be careful on how uh, I make my words. But the way they collect their information and their data is they try to exploit the uh, superficial level of thinking among people, which means they use any simplistic means to gain your trust and to provoke you to reveal information or data which you are not supposed to reveal. And that's dangerous. That's why I said it's dangerous because if you get used to it and you use it in almost all occasions, you may get in trouble or get other people in trouble. So superficial thinking is dangerous, uh, although it's convenient, which means could here I should say could lead to laziness, which is again it's uh, uh, it's dangerous, and also one other issue is that it. Uh, Again, if you get used to it, those people who are accustomed to uh, uh, superficial thinking and uh, simplistic thinking, uh, they can be, how I'm going to say that, uh, what is it, superficial, uh, accustomed people, uh, quite often, they don't like the deep thinking or enlightened thinking. Uh, can stay away from deep thinking because it is, again, it's time consuming and it's uh, labor consuming, it's energy consuming. So they will stay away from deep and enlightened thinking. And therefore, may miss the most important issues in life, such as the essence of the aqidah. And that's something which I, I find quite often when I uh, talk to people and discuss deep issues about the aqidah and the way the uh, proofs and the evidences that the Muhammad peace be upon him is indeed a prophet and a messenger of Allah and that the Quran uh, uh, cannot be the word or the make of a human and must be the make of, uh, of a God the who is the creator in this case. Uh, and you, I, I find that some people, they will just, after a few words or sentences, they will just say, Oh brother, you are wasting your time. I just believe in it, so why uh, uh, why bother talking to me? So he accepts the fact that I believe that the Quran is the word of Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger. That's it, finish, I'm, I'm done. Although he got that belief through what we call the imitation. He just found his parents believing in Allah and the Muhammad and the Quran, and uh, that's all. Uh, because why? It's not because he doesn't believe. 
because he does believe and he uh, he accepts that, but because the level of thinking he is accustomed to is the simple, uh, superficial one, therefore he denies the need for deep or enlightened thinking. And quite often you will find someone who will say, oh brother, you are complicating issues, you are making it complex. It's not making it complex. You are using a different level of thought. So the sim if I get uh, uh, simplistic or superficial, I can be taken advantage of, I can get in dangerous situations, I can avoid thoughts of very high value simply because they are above and beyond being simple. Now, I have to warn one more, one more thing before I move to the, to the other one. Uh, uh, quick thinking. Someone who think quickly, he immediately gets it. Sometimes you, 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 you throw a wall or a piece of information on a certain issue. You find the brother within seconds, he can come up to a conclusion uh, which is very, very uh, deep. And, but he's not simple. That's not, a quick thinking does not necessarily mean simple. That's important because uh, sometimes uh, you want to take your time in uh, thinking so that you will not appear as being simple or superficial. No, that's not necessarily uh, uh, needed because you can be a deep or enlightened thinker a way above and beyond being uh, simplistic, but still you are quick and fast. You are a quick thinker, you are a fast thinker, uh, like the, uh, probably some of you are experts at the quick math calculations. Some people, they do very complex multiplication and division operations in a split of a second. And that requires a very fast judgment on this, because that's a thinking, it's a, it's a thought process, because you have the problem, you have the issue, you have previous information on how to uh, 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 figure out the uh, multiplication, the components of the multiplicand, the multiplier. You can uh, uh, divide it, simplify it in your brain, and then do the the, the uh, calculation, and then composing all of it together in a split of a second. You give uh, uh, you give an answer. That's quick thinking. That's not simplistic, and that is needed. That's wanted. And that's which I mentioned. There is the uh, there is the book on quick thinking, which I will come to it towards the end of this class, or maybe in the next uh, series of classes, to talk about quick thinking, how it can be attained, its values, and the the, the need for quick thinkers thinkers in the ummah. So. Before I proceed to the next uh, uh, level of thinking, I will pause for a few uh, few seconds or minutes. Uh, if you have any questions on this issue, somebody needs to ask me a question or to comment here, uh, we will take them. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, my question is to earlier slide. Uh, when man saw birds flying in the sky, uh, this is a reality. Can we say that that this reality instigated a thought in man that uh, he started thinking about uh, like flying himself in the skies? So if this is like that, that this reality instigated this thought. So what, what kind of information, earlier information was there? And if it was there, early information and what sort of uh, correlation he managed to draw? Oh, the, you are talking about the first person who uh, attempted to fly? Yeah, and this thought, instigation of yeah. the thought by this reality. Right. Well, uh, let me uh, take you back to the uh, uh, to the real case of the two sons of Adam. Remember the one of them who killed his brother for a very silly reason that his brother 
his uh, his qurban was accepted by uh, Allah Azza wa Jal and the, the killer, uh, his qurban was not accepted for some other reason. So then he got sad and then he saw the uh, two crowds, uh, that one crowd was dead and the other, the second one, buried the, uh, the dead crow in the, uh, in the sand. So uh, that instigated the uh, thought process in the uh, in the brain of the of the person of the son of one of the sons of Adam, his name Habil, uh, and realized that he can do the same thing for his brother. So that's uh, now here there is an issue of resembling. Resem re re repeating the act, repeating the act as is. So repeating the act as is, is not necessarily a new thought. Repeating the act as is not necessarily a new thought. It is just imitating. So he imitates that. Now it becomes a thought, it becomes a thought uh, when he finds out, let's say in the case, somebody saw the, uh, a bird flying, it becomes a thought when he finds out that he cannot fly in the same manner as the bear does. So he needs other tools or other issues. So it's not sufficient for him to imitate the bird because if he imitates the bird jumping from, uh, the, uh, from the roof, he will uh, be killed and he will die. Uh, and he will not, he, he doesn't fly. So he finds out that he needs more information and more issues. So he goes and starts looking for pieces of information which is related to the flight and to the dynamics and to the need for air uh, that's for himself at least, not for the bird. So then the thought process is provoked is provoked by seeing a bird. But the thought itself is a collection of activities of the brain that has to do with the mechanics, that has to do with the dynamics of the, uh, of the air, that has to do with the weight of the person. And believe it or not, if you go to the first person, the uh, memoir of, uh, they call him uh, Firnas or Abbas, who the first who imitated a flight and eventually he was uh, he was killed. He could not uh, succeed, but he did some at least a few seconds of flight. You'll find in his memoirs, which is the data and information available on him, that he investigated for so many days or hours to do what the bird was able to do, or to try to do what the bird. So here, uh, uh, and that's why I brought the issue, the data available on what that person collected and used in order to do the, to, to do the imitation, although the imitation is not quite as the imitation of the, the son of Adam, who just repeated exactly what he saw. He did not have to invent a new idea. So the when the object or the event provokes your thought, then now you start digging the information you have or acquiring new information. You need to acquire new information so that you can uh, uh, do the job. And that we experience that on, on our daily basis. But remember, uh, we are uh, 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 moving a little bit faster to the next level, but if I remain at the superficial, simplistic thinking, then I would see, oh, a bird moves its wings like this and starts flying. And I do have hands which can move like the, the, uh, uh, the wing of a bird. And there are some birds whose, whose hands or wings resemble mine. So I said, why not? I would go to a high level uh, to a tree, or to a roof of a building, and I start 
flying. And that's what would immediately kill me because that's superficial. I just saw something it provoked something in my mind that, oh, I can resemble that. This is a flight. I am a human. He is a bird. I can fly. Uh, he's the creature of Allah. I am also the creature of Allah. So why not? I will do that. That is, that's very superficial. Very superficial. And in this case, it's dangerous. So we're coming back here. Because it can lead you to some very serious problems, even to death. But I have a quick question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so you mentioned for the superficial thinking, it's related to mostly being lazy. It now, could lead, no, it could lead. I said, look here. And this, so now I'm, I'm being non superficial because I carefully selected the word convenience for the comfort of the process. And if I stick to it, I become lazy, lazy in terms of, of thinking. Or my, and of course, if my brain is lazy, that's the worst type of laziness you could ever get. It's worse than becoming very fat. Go ahead now. Finish yes. so, so, okay, so convenient. So my, my question is, what leads a person? So for instance, if we, if we uh, take an example, and uh, maybe if, if uh, you can correct me if my example is correct or not, if we take it in a political sense, that yes. when Muslim, Muslim leaders, they stand up on the pulpit, or I mean, they, they make an example about that they care about the issue of Gaza or Kashmir or something, and most of the people will follow this, say, okay, yeah. look, they are doing their best, so this is what they care about it. So this is on a very superficial level. If they were to think a little bit deeper into what the policies are, what their actions are, they would see that it's very contrary to what they're doing. Exactly. So if, if this is the thing, why, what leads a person to just take it superficially and not, I mean, see what's obvious, what's been going on. So what's, what, what would make a person be superficial or uh, enlightened or deeper thinker? I mean, it's just a matter of training a brain to kind of uh, get into that process? Well, yes. Uh, what takes them out of the superficial level is the training and endurance and sabr. And here, that's where the reason I mentioned the word convenient. It's very convenient and uh, uh, easy for someone to be just uh, to, to remain at the superficial level and not to dig deep. If uh, uh, Erdogan comes up and says, oh, uh, the Israelis are criminals and uh, the Palestinians are the victims and uh, this should not uh, go without punishment. In the superficial manner, I will applaud. I will say, mashallah. In the deep thinking I say, well, wait a second, but you still have an embassy in your uh, country for the same people who are killing the Palestinians, who you are feeling bad for. And you just call them criminals and you have them in your country. That's a contradiction and you have, uh, uh, so then wait a second, that's it. Let me understand what exactly, what exactly is meant by these words rather than take the superficial uh, uh, attitude that this is uh, marvelous. It's good. It's a good stand. So the convenient of thought, convenient of life, and the comfort that people, the comfort zone they, they live in allows them eventually to be lazy and allow them, uh, lead them into the danger of accepting what's not acceptable and the danger of being diluted. Uh, and the, uh, if I want to, to go deeper, rather than staying uh, superficial myself, I would say, look, the uh, superficial thinking and the simplistic thinking, it is an objective by, of politicians, to keep this level of thinking the overwhelming in a society. Why? Because it allows them to, uh, to mislead them. So that's why uh, where you could, I said here, you may get in trouble to get other people in trouble because of the superficial thinking. It's dangerous for you. Uh, you can be diluted. You can be misled. And that's exactly how uh, governments in general 
uh, they want people to be superficial. And that's in fact the whole mass media issue or the, the very uh, focused media allows you to bombard you with uh, specific pieces of information and keep repeating the same piece of information. So it becomes your most relevant information at the time when you make a judgment. So the, so the uh, superficial thinking, it's very dangerous for the ummah, very dangerous for individuals. And it is an objective, it's a target to keep it the most prominent among people. Why? Because this is how you can lead people when they are semi-ignorant, not ignorant, semi, because a superficial thinking thinker is not ignorant. He's simply a lazy thinker. He's a, a person who has, who loves the convenience of being just use the first piece of information. And if I can make you, if I can make you uh, uh, use uh, the first piece of information and I make sure that the first piece of information comes to your brain is the one I, I gave you. Because you may receive lots of information from all types of people. And sometimes the best information is the one that you use first, and then you are good. But if I am smart, uh, I am the media guru, and I am smart, I am the uh, strategic planner, I say, wait a second. I want to make sure that the brothers or the people who live let's say, in Bangladesh or Myanmar or in Jordan or in Turkey or somewhere, the most relevant information, the quickest piece of information that comes to their brain is the following piece of information. How do I do it? I repeat it for you a million times. So it keeps, it remains the, the fresh uh, idea or thought uh, or information in your brain so you could use it first. And that's uh, uh, what uh, probably you all know how the Google works. Uh, if you uh, keep using certain link, uh, quite often it becomes in the sorted list of, uh, of results it comes to the top. So the first thing that you see, if you search something on Google, quite often the first five searches results are the ones that you are going to use. Although Google is telling you, I have found 25,520 results of your uh, of the ones you are looking for, but you are not going to go to the 25,000 results. You will go to the ones which are displayed on the first page. That's exactly how superficial thinking is done. So it is very dangerous. Uh, politicians use that a lot. And uh, typical people, typical superficial people are likely to make mistakes because it is being designed in this manner. Because there are people who understand exactly what we are talking about in this class. So now, probably if I extend only a few more words, my job, my duty as a person who is carrying Islamic da'wah in a certain method, and I want the people to uh, uh, come uh, to help me and to be part of this, is to raise the level of thinking of the people from the level of superficial to yet the second higher or the third higher level, to the highest level. Why? because I can uh, guarantee that the ones who work with me are not easily deceived. They do not get in danger. Uh, they do not move into the uh, crowd of lazy, uh, from uh, mental lazy people. And this is the power I need. Now, uh, you may ask me the question, well, but you make your life more difficult. How do I, do I make my life more difficult? or because now I raise the level of thinking among the people that work with me, and it takes me much more time to convince, because now they are deep thinkers or good thinkers. Well, fine, that is, uh, that's good. I want that. It is, makes my life more difficult, but more useful and more productive and less danger and more secure. So all of the advantages, they do overcome the uh, the difficulty of making this happen. Actually, I think so with the super, superficial, if uh, 
it, it makes it more difficult because you have to keep repeating the information if they don't get it. With the deep thinker, at least you have to put more effort, but maybe they will get it. Yes. But with the superficial, you tell them, and after a couple of months, you have to again repeat them and then again repeat them, and it, it's a cyclical. I mean, you might tell them about the elections, and they will maybe listen, and then after a few months again, they're back to the same process. So That's true. That's true. It is, to me, to get into with the people to teach them to raise their level to the uh, level of deep thinking, it may be difficult at the beginning, but later it becomes very uh, productive. Uh, the unfortunate thing is for the uh, powerful media structure, uh, the issue of dealing and bombarding people with misinformation and making them use it as a first uh, uh, evidence of judgment uh, that is uh, easier for them because it's mass media uh, and there are lots of money paid there somebody is uh, paying uh, paying for this but that's uh, that's their job that's what they do and that's why your job my job is much more difficult because uh, you are facing you are dealing with the same class of people that are being bombarded by this uh, big uh, media machines with all of these pieces of information, which could be correct, by the way, could be valid information, but that's not all the truth. The truth is not only the piece of information I gave you, it's a whole set of, of ideas and thoughts and information. So it, that's another way why uh, uh, I would say the simplistic Superficial thinking is very dangerous for societies, for growth, for individuals, very dangerous. And it's something that needs to be uh, abrogated uh, as much as possible. Uh, and that's why if you read the Quran, the way Allah Azza wa Jal described the Sahaba, when the Sahaba got it, when they got Islam and got the message and talks about them, uh, like these are type of people who are يتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا uh, they are يتفكر يتفكر means keeps thinking keeps thinking now keeps thinking that means exerting effort about the creation of the heavens and the earth خلق السماوات والأرض and and trying to see the objective of that Rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batila. Oh, this must not, must be created for a reason, a valid, good reason, not for just like for no and for nothing. Rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batila. And then they continue. Subhanaka faqina adab al nar. Oh Allah, then please uh, relieve us from the punishment of hellfire. So look at this thought process by looking at the heavens and keep thinking they arrive at many conclusions and that's the sahaba so that was a generation of people and allah Azzawajal does not say only abu Bakr and umar did that or ali and uthman or talha and zubair he's talking about the people with the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam which are the sahaba it's a collectively collective group so it's a, a I wouldn't leave this subject before really emphasizing time and again and stressing the fact time and again that it is a very dangerous level to remain. It is in fact, in fact, uh, although it's one level above the instinctual reaction, the reaction based on instinct, which does not require a thought process at all, but it's almost as dangerous. It's almost as dangerous because assuming, I mean, the assumption is that you are using your brain, you are using your mind, but you are using it very, very simplistically, very superficially, and that's, that's dangerous. Uh, as alaikum. Wa alaikum uh, so when uh, the simplistic and uh, superficial thinking, so uh, as you mentioned that it depends upon the level of the information, the kind of information we have. 
So can we differentiate between different kinds of information so that we can differentiate between simplistic and uh, uh, deep thinking? For example, so when we have, uh, say, for example, on a reality, we have 10 kinds of information we see, uh, uh, in 10 points of information. But uh, on the contrary, we have only one kind of information that makes it a deep uh, thought, uh, uh, information. So is there any uh, uh, differentiation qualitatively or quantitatively, quantitatively, quantitatively that makes it simplistic uh, or deep thinking? Okay. Uh, I think, uh, let me abstain from this uh, answer because that requires me to go into the next level. So once I lay down the uh, deep thinking structure, then we start seeing the uh, these, what's the main divide between both. Uh, and that's the, but I brought the issue of uh, down here, the quick thinking just uh, to to show, and I said, I will talk about this later, about the, the, because you could be a quick thinker, but not a simplistic thinker. And when I say deep, uh, I would, as I will explain in the next uh, session, uh, uh, as the word uh, sounds, the information may be buried deep in my brain. So go and dig for it. Now in our technological framework, quite often you will say, you know what? When you give me data, please sort it out for me. I need it to be sorted based on uh, relevance. Uh, sort it for me based on date of uh, the information on see which is old, which is new. Please sort it for me based on its uh, uh, value appreciation by certain types of scholars. Uh, so give me the data. It makes it easier for me to do the deep thinking instead of me sorting everything out. I want the data or the information to be sorted. Now, our brain is capable of doing that. Our brain is capable of doing the sort to make sure that it finds the relevant information uh, uh, without uh, too much hassle or difficulty, but that requires training. You are right. It's it's not uh, it's not simple, especially if you are not used to that. It requires uh, some uh, training, uh, and the brain can be trained. The brain can be trained, and I will talk about training the brain. Uh, what does it mean? What does it mean to train the brain to memorize, to retrieve, to find? the relevant information. And there are techniques for that, which uh, I think in the next uh, uh, class, not the next lecture, when we finish this class, we'll go to the uh, next one. We will talk about some methods of training the brain so that it can, uh, it can tell that now I am not simplistic. And uh, I, for, for one, quite often, I catch myself, I catch myself as being uh, superficial. I give a thought, I need a thought, then uh, I pass uh, a judgment for a split of a second. I find, oh, wait a second, Abu Talib, this is superficial. You could have done better. I could have done better. And, and that's part of the training is uh, I, will, I will be able to tell if I am being superficial, simplistic, or I am deep enough. Because depth, by the way, and that's when we talk about deep thinking, it is how deep you want to go. And that's a very big challenge uh, because you may have in your brain million pieces of information. Are you sure you are browsing through all? Or did you get somehow process of verification that you have used the most relevant and everything else, no matter how big or, or uh, it is, uh, it may be irrelevant. That's, that is something that we, uh, we need to get in. So uh, as you could see, I'm not only interested here in uh, giving examples or just academic here, what is simplistic thinking, let's just define it and move. No, no, we really, 
want to be able to, as I said, to catch myself whenever I am superficial and to really get to nail myself down and say, don't repeat it again. That's dangerous. We did it now. You could get used to it. And sometimes you get used to it and people buy it. So you will become very happy because, oh, I don't have to be deep. People can get my idea. Why? They can get your idea and they take it because they are as superficial as you are. Okay, go ahead, uh, Sister Ak uh, Akil. I think uh, you have a question. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, I've got a question. Uh, nowadays, it's more very popular, like visualization and um, affirmations, and also uh, the in our therapy, uh, such kind of techniques are used, like mandalas and uh, neurography. Uh, I want to know the hukum on this kind of issues, and because they say like all these kind of techniques, they create new neurons in our brain, and they. Uh, like um, influence our behaviors and decision-making process. How it works in reality? Well, uh, these are techniques of really uh, very sophisticated techniques that allow you to, uh, in fact, they do allow, they do help in the deep thinking because they do help in, uh, especially with visualization, uh, and uh, uh, visual memory so that the piece of information that you are looking for in a certain incident, you don't have to wait hours in order to, to get. Uh, and the fact that it makes your neurons fast, these are techniques or these are uh, going on the physiological level of the brain, uh, that's what we call fast thinking, because what's fast thinking? Fast thinking is the ability for neurons to reach that piece of information wherever it's stored, bring it up to the, uh, to the forefront of the, of the head so that it becomes your uh, most important piece of information related to the, to the object. But that is, uh, now, technically speaking, it could really be, some type of physiological uh, improvement or change or what we call training uh, of the brain. That's what I was alluding to. It's the training of the brain, training for correlation, to be able to correlate information together. Like for example, uh, I give the uh, political example, Biden and Putin meet in, uh, uh, in Vienna. Then immediately I do the correlation. Uh, I say, well, there was a meeting similar to this one uh, almost uh, 50 years ago, back in 1961, when Kennedy and Khrushchev they met in the same uh, uh, in the same city. So there is that comes uh, now that piece of information probably I have read it uh, 20 years ago or 25 years ago, a long time ago. But then, if the brain is trained, then it can associate events and information together and that's training now training does not necessarily mean that you really copy information from cell to a cell i'm getting very physiological here but it does mean that the the agent responsible for pulling an information that agent knows where to go and get it immediately and that today they talk about neurons and talk about the, the uh, quick uh, uh, pulses that move across the brain in order to get information. All of these are physics. Really, the, like Sheikh Nabhani, in order to come up with these thoughts, he did not need to know the physics of the brain. Now, the physics of the brain is this is a creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. It works as, as planned or as designed, but the essence here what we care about is the ability to store information, to get to the piece of information at the right time, and to get to the right information, to the right object or to the right thought. That's a process needs to be trained. And before we train, we need to understand. So now I do understand what does simplistic superficial thinking. I know it's dangerous, 
Therefore, I know I need, I want to avoid it. I want to be trained not to get into this dilemma. Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, I think, uh, let me see if uh, there are questions on the chat group. No, okay, that's fine. Uh, I will leave the next level, which is deep thinking for a lecture on its own. I'm not going to continue this uh, now. If there are no questions, we can stop here and I will put this lecture, inshallah, on the, uh, on the tube and it will be accessed on the, uh, uh, on the platform. Uh, and if there are no questions, I can, uh, we can quit. Uh, if, uh, I see Brother Yusuf, uh, Sayyid has a question. Go ahead, Brother Yusuf. Uh, Sheikh, uh, my question is regarding- Oh, the, just one uh, second, one second. I will, uh, uh, I want to point out to a superficial uh, uh, issue, which I catch. Uh, the uh, name Sheikh does not apply to me. Okay, so just call me with my name uh, without the sheikh, because sheikh has a specific meaning uh, which has to do with age, not with knowledge. So uh, although I know it's being used the other way around, but because of the superficial thinking within the ummah, that's the, uh, the word sheikh has uh, dominated us. So go on. Uh, my question is regarding the creation of Adam and Adam al -Islam. Uh, uh, Allah, uh, related to what? I didn't get it. Adam alayhi salam. Okay. When Allah created Adam alayhi salam, the angels uh, asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why, uh, why, why Allah is creating Adam or the human being who will, who will uh, create fitna and who will shed blood. So from where, where did the angels get this information or how was this uh, thought uh, process? Oh, okay. This question is very interesting. Number one, number one, there is no way in the world we can pass a judgment on the angels, how they operate or how they function or how they, uh, they use information because as an object is beyond our reach. So are not thinking does not apply to them. Uh, the only thing we know is that the report that Allah Azza wa Jal said, this is what the angels said. Now, where did they get this information? Allah did not tell us about it. So, and we, we don't have access to them to find out where do they get information. Now, in the next part of the series of ayat, when the issue about teaching Adam the names and Allah asked the angels to bring these names, they say, oh, our Rabb, the only information we have is the one that you give us. We cannot make up information. We cannot uh, generate information. لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا. Subhanak, the only thing you teach us, then we use it. You don't teach us, we don't get it. So that puts me in the uh, position to, uh, to understand or even assume, uh, well, let, let me ba take back the word assume, to understand and to know that this issue about how Adam is going to behave was told to them by Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, when did he tell it to them? In, in, in the ayah, in the previous one, when Allah told the angels, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa, I am uh, creating on the ground, or to make in the, uh, a living being on the ground, and this living being is a khalifa. So the that's what he told us in the Quran. Now, 
it must be that when Allah told them a Khalifa, he told them some of the characteristics of this Khalifa, what is going to happen. And that includes the issue of both shedding the blood and uh, making mischief. So they used that information. So that information was told to them by Allah and has to be to, uh, must be told by Allah. And it's not a thought process. It's not that they derived. They derived it. Because that's what they said. We have no knowledge except the one that you teach us. You tell us exactly. And when he taught it to Adam, he said, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمًا He taught the names to Adam. He did not say, I also taught the names to the angels. And so the part of uh, Adam that has to do with his knowledge and his capability of uh, knowing and repeating things, especially like uh, the names, uh, the uh, the angel said, oh, you did not teach us that. So how could we uh, say them? How could we know them? You gave them to Adam. And so we cannot find this information. We don't know it. We cannot uh, uh, repeat it. Although uh, Adam did repeat these names, did say them. So the issue here, the malaika, the angels, as far as we are concerned, we don't know exactly how they acquire information if they ever do by themselves, but we do know that they do acquire information directly from Allah Azza wa Jal, and they say that this is the only source of information they may have. So that issue about the malaika, where did they get this knowledge from, is must be from Allah Azza wa Jal, because otherwise they couldn't know it. Now, did Allah Azza wa Jal tell them? It must be the case, because that's what they have said in regard to the uh, question they were asked about uh, about Adam. Okay. Sure. Any more uh, questions? I know when we do talk about the deep and enlightened thought, then you these questions will come back and we can take them uh, as we go. Okay. Zakum Allah khair, brothers, sisters. Thank you very much. Uh, and for the ones who are here from the administrators of the OSIS, please uh, send emails or provoke the group. See what happened to the uh, rest of the brothers. I know yesterday it was uh, out of my uh, control and well. That's why we couldn't have the lecture yesterday, so it should not be a cause for people to not to show up uh, unless uh, we are not fulfilling our job correctly. Assalamu alaikum khair, brothers, sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam.